What's going on, everybody? Scott Ogan here. We are going to talk a little Tiger. Charlie Woods, they stole the golf world this past weekend. We had the PNC Championship. So we're going to get into a couple of things I saw that I think can help your game. Because I think now we are kind of officially into the winter. No golf to watch for a while. So guess what? We got to get better at our own game. So we will be doing that tonight. Talking a little short game as well. Talking a little 3D. Let's get to it. What's going on, everybody? Scott Hogan here tonight. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. We do this every Monday night uh, at 6 p.m. Um, still up in the air if we're going to be doing one next week. So a little programming note. It'll be the day after Christmas. I will be traveling back. And it's supposed to get really cold, really blizzardy out. So we'll see how that all works out. But excited about this time of year you know kind of the tv golf is done we get some of the funner you know kind of fun events to watch and all that but uh you know we get to now help you work on your game so we are going to be doing that make sure if you're not a subscriber you click that subscribe button and also if you are looking to work on stuff okay gifts are available at scott hogan golf i'll link all of that below we have our boot camps and everything that are going to be going on all right so what are we talking about tonight? Well, hey, Tiger and Charlie, they stole the show at the PNC. Now, I like this event for other reasons, too. I love watching, um, you know, players like Nellie Corda play. I love seeing her play a lot. We're going to talk about her swing a little bit later. So that will be part of it. Love watching some of the other younger kids. And you see some different styles of swings. Plus, you know what? Seeing a little bit of like Lee Trevino hit some really cool shots. That guy is super old school. Seeing Annika play the course a little bit different. It's just nice and it's fun to see people playing the course differently than, you know, what you kind of see on the tour, which is just bomb it, power away, and then everybody's kind of playing it the same way. And it's really who can pull it off the best. Whereas I like to show, you know, golf is one of the best parts about golf is there are multiple ways to play it usually. And just because you can't, let's say, hit it 330 yards, you can still play really good golf and hit really good shots. You just have to do it in a different way. But with that said, it's hard not to talk about Charlie, how to talk about Tiger, because that's honestly the most that you are going to see. So you will just uh, have to kind of see what's going on with it, with the rest of the games through highlights. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what we saw with Tiger and Charlie tonight. Okay, and the big thing that we wanted to talk about is the footwork, the footwork. Now, this was a big deal this week because when we looked at Tiger and Charlie, both of them, they coincidentally both had leg injuries, foot injuries. Okay, we know about Tiger's injuries. Right leg has issues now pretty much forever from his car accident. We now had Charlie who was swinging good, but then on Friday, he ended up rolling his ankle, and then it gets stiff and all that. That's what happens with those, and, you know, maybe not right away it doesn't hurt, but as it gets, you know, you sit out, you, you know, you go through the night, it started hurting him pretty bad, and so that caused some different things going on in his golf swing. So what I wanted to do was let's talk a little bit about how this affects your golf swing, okay? So... We've got his swings here, okay? So one's a driver, and on the right is gonna be a short irony hit, but there's other driver examples that you would be able to see from this. When we're looking at his swing on the left, you can see one, his swing is getting awesome. It's getting a lot like JT, in my opinion. I know there's some Rory talk, but that's something that I think you would look at as you go through. Um, I, I would say, hey, I think you've got a little bit of JT, and obviously he coaches, his, his dad coaches him and all that stuff, so it makes sense. But what I see as well is look at the footwork as he's going through, okay? He is 
driving through, driving into that lead leg and letting this thing eat, okay? Now, what happens when we do that, okay? What happens when we do that is as I'm driving forward, I'm able to drive my lower body, I'm able to drive my pelvis, okay? So what's going to happen as I do that, okay, is when I drive forward, that club can swing more from inside going out, okay? So if I bring up, let's bring up our numbers here, okay? And I'm gonna just take a look at club path up on the top right, okay? Top right, it is our third number down. So let's go ahead and drive forward, okay? You can see there, club path 4.4 to the right, okay? 4.4 to the right up there. Now, when we take a look at when he played the first round on Saturday, he was having a lot of issues getting to that front foot. So what he ends up having to do is he has to make this really big arm swing, okay? Really big arm swing. And he essentially just has to kind of turn his upper body without moving forward, okay? So what ends up happening when you do that? Well, what happens is, as we turn through, you go back, all right? When we go back through, without moving forward and you just come through, that club is gonna to wanna to travel very hard to the left, okay? And when we see the shot he hit, he hit a little cut on this particular one. It worked its way with a little fade. He also hit a driver where he essentially just played a banana ball. And that was smart of him. And I think that was a big reason Tiger wanted him you know, playing and all that is like, you gotta figure out how to do this when you don't have everything. So he had to make some ball flight adjustments. So if I go through this and I'm gonna hang back a little bit, again, what happens is for me to get the club to the ball, I've gotta turn and make that club travel more to the left, okay? So we get something like that, a little harder to make really good contact, okay? Because your low point, it gets, it's a weird dynamic you have with low point where you're leaning back to offset how much it's moving forward with the club path. But again, as we look at that shot, top left, you're gonna see 7.7 .7 to that left, with that club path, right? And that's not what you're gonna be wanting to see, okay? Especially for a lot of you slicers out there, that is going to be problematic as you go through it. So one of the big things that we wanna be working on, and we're gonna be talking about it on Wednesday's video, is you have to get your footwork traveling forward so you can make your club path better, right? So again, take a look at that club path out there, 1.7 to the right, okay? 1.7 to the right, okay? You'll make better contact as you do this as well. So that was a big thing that we saw as we were going through with footwork. And that's something I see with a lot of people as they're trying to work on their games is, you know, a lot of times they're thinking about turning, 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 but in reality, you gotta get that pelvis, you gotta get the body moving forward. So instead of turning first, where you don't shift forward, we gotta get forward and then that will let everything turn through when the time is appropriate. And that's what we would be looking at, okay? Now, as we look at this in other parts of the game, we said we're gonna talk a little short game tonight. So. As I look more at, you know, how did this have an effect on some other things going on, let's think about what's going on here, okay? Let's think about what is happening to both of our players, okay? And how are they gonna see some changes and some struggles that are happening? So we're gonna talk a little short game with this. So on the left, we have Charlie, on the right, you have Tiger, okay? So again, they're playing a scramble, so they are hitting the exact same shots, okay? Now, this is Florida. They're in Orlando. Uh, the course was in great shape, considering they just had a massive hurricane, so you gotta remember that. So, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but it did look great. But 
what happens is in, when you play in Florida, you play anywhere south, you're going to start getting like Bermuda grass. The grass is a little grainier, okay? Depending on where you are, they might overseed it, but it's a little grainier. It's usually a little, little thicker, okay? And so what that means is it starts growing certain directions. So it usually grows like down hills. It grows towards the sun, the setting sun, stuff like that. And you get what's called into the grain. So into the grain is grass is leaning towards me. I'm hitting into where the grass is laying. That means if you catch that grass first, it will really catch the club and it's going to make a world of hurt on your short game. So what you have to do is you really have to focus on getting forward and trying to catch that ball really, really cleanly. And I think a lot of times you're gonna play, you know, you can play it with an open face, that can help. But I do find that I think you're gonna be playing a lot of lower shots because you're gonna be moving that ball back. But the big key is you gotta be able to move forward into your front foot as you're hitting the shot. So we know Charlie was having an issue with doing that. And we did see him do this a little bit on wedges and stuff as well where he chunked them but he's having an issue getting to his front foot and you'll see here he just basically chunks it okay catches the turf it looks like a really bad shot it's he's probably very close to hitting a really good shot again that is what the grass does that is very common in this bermuda grass and so what happens when he's not leaning forward enough what you're going to get is his head will actually not move forward as well and it tends to kind of want to hang back a little bit. And so then your body starts to tilt. And then you're going to kind of hit that ground first, which, again, with the type of grass we're dealing with, that will not be good. Okay. Now, we're going to watch Tiger over here on the right. Again, he stepped up right after him. He actually does chip this shot in, by the way. Um, just watch the subtle differences, right? He's going to have, let's get in here. Let's just get a circle here on his head. Okay. He's going to go. Head is definitely moving more forward, keeping that center, that mass forward. He's hitting a lower shot, so his hands are pushing a little more forward. Just making sure the center is more forward. And I've documented how I've had issues with short game shots in the past. Okay. I've documented that. Turns out that's one of the big things I had to work on it in an effort to try to like hit it higher or just be shallower into the ball. You know, you hear about this don't making marks and the stuff in the ground. I got off with my center. So what do we have to do? Well, you have to get that weight onto that front foot. Again, it's just a common thing where we want to get everything forward. And even on a chip, we can move it even more forward through the shot. You don't have to keep everything still. That's what we see Tiger do there is as he hits it, you know, he's even moving more forward as he goes through it, right? Making sure that he's going to make good contact on that golf ball. So again, a big thing we can see from there, again, I think Charlie can probably hit the shot, but when you got a little foot issue that's making you a little reluctant to get on that front side, that's what you see. And this is what we see a lot of amateur players do as they go through. So again, it's forward, I like to just pivot the body and then feel like I'm moving more forward. You see how my foot, the weight of my foot is actually going outside there? That's okay. Okay. We're okay to do that. And if we do that, what will end up happening is I'm going to make really good contact. Okay. Really good contact with the golf ball. You hear the clicking of the golf ball, right? Hear that click as you go and I can do it all day okay just pivot there we go there we go hit that one a little higher but same idea okay all my shots are going to start being in that same area as we go okay so that's going to be the big takeaway that I saw you know as we're going through and how important sometimes you don't realize how important things are until you actually go ahead and you know kind of lose it and then you realize oh man this is something that i need to be able to do to be able to hit good shots and ironically tiger's become a very very good wedge player like really really good i think um and it's with his right leg he really can't i don't think he can load it as much as he once did so he's kind of staying more left and centered 
that's what I see. Um, that's, that's a big deal when you're trying to hit those, uh, those little tiny wedge shots as you're going. So we like to see that uh, in our swing. So uh, that would be what I would take away from that. Okay, so we're gonna move it in. One last thing that I wanted to take away from the night, okay? And this will be our, this is gonna be our 3D corner, okay? Using that Sportsbox AI app, okay? So really gonna be pretty sweet. We're gonna take a look at a swing here though, okay? And this is a swing I think a lot of people are gonna know. This is gonna be Nelly Corda, I think my favorite swing in the world, okay? And so we're gonna take a look at her golf swing just so simple, so, so beautiful swing. I mean, it's just like, how do you ever hit a bad shot? And one of the things that I want people to realize, okay, is when they are hitting, I get so many people that, again, they come to me and they say, all right, we're going to make turns, right? We're going to turn our body, do that. And, and again, there's, there is a part where you need to do that. But when we look at a swing like hers, okay, she just does such a good job of going back and keeping things super simple as she goes through. She brings the club back, club goes up, arms go up, look at how her arms are nice and high, body is turned, and then she just lets the arms drop, she's shifting in that front foot, and then takes it into the ball. Now, there's one key thing that she does, and a lot of really good players do, especially the ones that draw the golf ball, that they do. Okay, and this is where we're gonna get into some 3D. All right, we wanna look at her shoulder and what we call side bend. Okay, so what is side bend in your golf swing? Okay, well side bend is if I'm here, okay, and I'm going to hit it, it's how much am I bent over to the golf ball? Okay, again, I think a lot of people think more about turn than they do about what we call side bend. All right, so she gets through there and look at how much she is bent over here with that side bend. It's a good amount, right? She's got that, that body tilting through and that right shoulder is staying down through that golf ball. And that's one thing that we wanna look at as we are going through to hit golf shots, okay? So again, everybody thinks about turn, but what has to happen in a golf swing is what I like to see is I want to see turn and side bend getting pretty close and matching up pretty close. Okay, so let's, let's define what those are. So turn would be if I just stood here and I just have this club and I just turn my body nice and level. That is turn. Side bend is this, okay, just side bending, right? When we hit a golf ball and I'm bent forward, I've got a side bend, which helps me turn as we go, right? You can see how I'm already turning open by side bending. So again, what I see a lot of people do is, especially if you're somebody that casts and stuff like that, you turn, okay, but you don't side bend. And then you rely on the club and your arms and everything to get down to the ball, okay? Again, you wanna use your arms and do things you know, with some ability with those arms and hands. They do go up and down, but if you don't use your body properly, they have to do weird things to get down to that golf ball. So what do I like to see? You can see here is a good example of somebody that draws the golf ball. They actually have more side bend than they have turned. So if we're looking at a target, okay, we're looking at a target, here I am, I am bending and I'm not turning way open. I'm keeping everything kind of closed as I bend, okay? Again, you're not, it's, no, it's not zero turn, but you have this feeling like, hey, I'm gonna keep it kind of closed to the target, but I'm gonna side bend, which then lets that club kind of work more in, okay? Now, just like with everything, you can overdo it, okay? It can be overdone. So let's talk about how I'd like to see you do this, okay? It's the simplest drill is just take the club across your shoulders, get yourself into a golf posture, and we're just going to point the club at the ball or somewhere close to it. 
we're going to shift forward and feel like the other end is pointing at the golf ball. Okay. And if we can take that feel into the ball, okay, of using good footwork and good bends, okay, we will see a much better, much more consistent delivery to that golf ball, which is what we are going for, okay? So that should be something you're looking for. I'm gonna do one more. Let's see if we get you a little data, send you out of here with on a uh, on a Monday night but again gonna bend it in okay let's see what we get there we go not bad not bad at all let's take a look you can see that club path up on the top right 2.9 to the right you can see the shape of that shot as well okay so getting an idea that's the 3d world that we are now in again it's not just hey i've got to turn and do everything it's all right how am i going to get everything to work together all the pieces working again what i see is people that actually just work too hard to do one thing which is again that turn and then they are not doing what they need to do to get good footwork and they're not adding the other parts that go with that body so again if you're interested, you can check out, we have our online learning. That's gonna be it for tonight. Just giving you a few tidbits of information to go with uh, into practicing this off season, especially if you're looking to hit more draws, things like that. This is a great way for you to do it. I like to start with small swings, see how far you can hit it. And again, we're gonna have more talking about how we get uh, some key launch monitor metrics, things like that. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. Uh, Wednesday is going to be a really good one, really important one. So you don't want to miss that one out. Uh, if uh, we don't see you, again, have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Holidays. If you're doing other things, um, hope everybody's safe. Stay warm this week. And if you're driving anywhere, safe travels uh, as well. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We will see you next time on the Scott Hogan Golf Show, and we'll have some live rounds this week. So, again, if you're not a subscriber, Click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on them. We're going to be playing a little golf. Thanks again, and we'll see you. Peace.